Hello everybody, Jack Foster here with WTK's Rock Solid Sports 90.3 FM. I got Jackson Williams with me here. Jackson, 41 to 17, Georgia took home the dub on Tennessee's homecoming game here with the black and orange jerseys. What's your immediate takeaway? Man, Tennessee hung around for about as long as they could. I mean, you look at this game, obviously an overmatched Tennessee team coming in against probably the nation's best team. It's, it's pretty obvious, especially after seeing them live tonight, that Georgia is the best team in the nation. This defense is tenacious. It is absolutely one of the best defenses. It's, if not the best defense in college football. And you saw that because Tennessee has one of the most dynamic offenses in the country, and they were to hold them to 17 points. Right, absolutely. And like you said, but Tennessee still scored the most points Georgia has given up all year. So, you know. A win and a loss. Take it with a grain of salt, right? But let's talk about Hendon Hooker's performance. 24 of 37 for 244 yards and a score with a pick. What do you think of Hendo Cinco tonight? Honestly, early he looked on. He looked sharp. He looked like this was going to be a game. He missed an early throw to Velas Jones on, I believe, the second play from scrimmage that would have been a 77-yard touchdown. But after that, the pressure started getting to him. I mean, uh, a couple guys got home. He got rocked at the first play of the second quarter. Harder than one of the hardest hits he's taken all season, and that's saying something for Hendon Hooker. And he started to sail the ball. He threw a he threw a really bad interception, and it just wasn't his night. I mean, Velas Jones Jr. said it himself: football's a game of up and downs. And I have no doubt that Hendon Hooker will close out the season strong. Yeah, and Ramel Keaton, he missed him on that play too, and Ramel another one for it, right? And let's talk about Ramel Keaton taking some positives for Tennessee's offense here. Javante Payton, obviously Tennessee's explosive receiver, having all these 70 plus yard touchdowns, in six and eight games. He left in the first quarter with an apparent upper body injury. What did you think of Ramel Keaton's ability to step in? Really, I mean, we hadn't seen Ramel Keaton since the Tennessee Tech game. So when you saw him out there for extended action, I didn't really know what to expect. But he delivered. I mean, how many catches did he have? For Ramel Keaton had five catches for 48 yards. And you saw on the tunnel screens, they tried to get him involved deep. And if that ball is about, I want to say, inches closer to Ramel Keaton, he has many more yards than what he had there and probably a touchdown. Yeah, obviously Tennessee was up after the first quarter, but there were some real chances for them to make splashes against yes. this number one team. Probably score 17 in the first quarter. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt this Tennessee team could have put up 24 Maybe even 28 tonight with some missed opportunities in this in this game, especially in the red zone. I mean, a huge turnover. I mean, what the game was pretty much out of reach. Hendon Hooker fumbles on, I believe, the eight yard line. Right. And I mean, that was another chance to score points. And if you wanted to get back in this game, that was your last opportunity too. So, really unfortunate timing of the turnovers. Yeah, absolutely. And Georgia's ability to kind of stop Tennessee's rushing attack was pretty good tonight. Jabari Small, 12 of four, 12 for 49. And obviously game script played a part in that. Tennessee not running the ball as much. But Tyon Evans was inactive tonight, declared inactive at the beginning of the game. And then they lose Peyton. Do you think that capped uh, Tennessee's offensive potential then? I, I think to an extent. Ramel Keaton obviously did a great job tonight. And there's no taking away from that. But he's not Javante Peyton. And Jabari Small, as much as Tennessee fans love him, he runs hard. He's He's a solid running back, but he's not Tyon Evans. Tyon right. Evans is one of the most explosive running backs. I mean, definitely the most explosive running back Tennessee has. But when you get down to the second running back, there's a big drop-off from Tyon Evans to Jabari Smalls, which, I mean, those two players I would probably say are the probably top, top – definitely top five impact players on the offense, if not top three. And – Last thing I want to touch here in Tennessee's offense, Cedric Tillman's ability uh, to really have a good game tonight. Uh, like I said, game script played a part, but 10 catches for 200 yards and a score for Tillman, now leading the balls in yards and catches and tied for first and touchdowns. Having a career year, what do you think of uh, number four tonight? He keeps doing the same. Jump balls are his specialty. You saw it down in this end zone right over here. You saw him uh, basically brush off a Georgia defender while being interfered with, catch the ball for a 29-yard gain setting up, I believe, the, the field goal they had in the first quarter. Right. And, I mean, this offense, is it's fun to watch. And when Cedric Tillman's on, he makes it even more fun to watch. You saw him take a slant 51 yards. He is becoming one of the, I mean, an elite pass catcher. And Tennessee has a plethora of elite pass catchers. So him being able to stand out later into the season, especially we don't know the status of Javante Payton, it could really come in handy with Cedric Tillman's emergence this season. And I also wanted to mention, we all know Georgia's got a vaunted defense, but they were able to sack Hendon Hooker five times tonight. Do you think that played a big part in how it went tonight? Yeah, I mean, especially with the overthrows. I mean, you saw Hendon Hooker definitely feel the pressure, even if it wasn't there from past plays. And it definitely affected his throws. It probably affected that one interception he threw. And it, it definitely affected this game because 
a lot of times in Tennessee would get a little bit of momentum. A sack would come, a holding call that I believe they had a holding call that the guy got through and sacked Tendon Hooker anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 pretty rough playing these guys like Jordan Davis. You know, it's just going to happen against Georgia. But let's talk about Georgia's offense going up against Tennessee's defense. Obviously, they scored 41 points. Stetson Bennett almost had a season high with 40 rushing 40 rushing yards tonight. What do you think of Georgia's offense as a whole? James Cook. That's what I thought. This he was a bad man on the Tennessee. Off uh, defensive front, they had no answer for him. Uh, the Georgia's first touchdown was a 39-yard scamper by, and he just hit a hole, hit another gear, and the balls had no chance to stop him. And that was pretty much the case of the night. And you saw it. I mean, it was also the Stetson Bennett show. We see again where Tennessee cannot capitalize uh, on third longs. QBs a lot of times are scrambling and picking up big first downs, and it's killing this defense. Yeah, if Stetson Bennett would have had two more yards and set a season high tonight, that would have been three quarterbacks that have set season highs against would Tennessee. Would it three in a row? Not in a row, but three total. Corral, okay. Young, and um, and um, okay, so t- uh, Stetson tonight. Levi- Levis did Levis did not, no. Okay. No. He was close, but not no cigar. But you talk about James Cook. He was effective in both uh, offensive facets. You know, 10 carries, 104 yards, and the two touchdowns. That's a great line. But he also had five catch, five, three catches, sorry, for 43 yards and uh, the touchdown on the wheel route. Just an incredible performance from the other number four. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was really a night. If you were number four, you were going to have a good night. <laughs> Absolutely. And, I mean, both were fun to watch, but James Cook definitely won out in, in terms, even if Cedric Tillman may have had a slightly better night statistically. Right. But it, you got to yeah, give it to James Cook. Yeah, we're split Harris tonight. I mean, Georgia come in, they ended up dominating. But I will say, great showing from Ball Nation tonight. Absolutely. This crowd was electric. It was very, I mean, there was there was some red in the house. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There was, there were, uh, there was a good section of red over in the uh, Georgia sideline, but for the most part, this crowd was loud all game, even into the third quarter when this game started to get out of hand. Uh, Vault fans showed up, and honestly, the buzz around this game felt different than a lot of times the number one team in the nation has come to pass under past regimes. Like when Alabama came to town in 2018, 20, uh, 2020, you could tell Tennessee was going to get stomped, but there was an energy around town this week that Tennessee's going to hang. There was hope, and John yeah, Michael has given this fan base hope. Yeah, and like I said, they scored the most points against Georgia, but it just didn't work out. But a great showing from Vol Nation nonetheless on homecoming weekend here. For Jackson Williams, I'm Jack Foster. This has been WTK Rock Solid Sports. Stand up live on Neyland Field after Tennessee, Georgia. We'll see you next time.